Good evening. I'm here by calling to order the Committee of the Whole meeting of February 14, 2022. Please stand and join me in the Pre Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, mm -hmm. so the purpose of the meeting um, this evening is to discuss the, up, the council update on the Aquatic Center. So Mr. Trotta, I'll let you begin. Thank you. Thank um, you. It's been about a, I don't know, about a month, maybe a little over a month since we were here the last time. And, you know, there's some, been some interesting advancements and wanted to kind of get you up to speed, sort of where we are with the process and uh, time frame and so forth. Christopher, if you go to the first slide. Um, right now we're in the, in the middle of three design phases, design development. This is where we start really working out all the project details. And just at four o'clock today, I was on a call, we were working out all the structural framing for the entire building um, and, and tweaking that because this week we're actually getting out a mill order, which is an order of steel, bar joists, uh, and metal deck because the lead time for getting all these materials is so long that that's we're actually getting the first package out to get in the hands of bidders to, and fabricators uh, to get in their queue to get this steel and, and metal deck on time. So we're really working at a, at a quick pace, um, but we're, we've been focusing on getting the, the answers for structural framing, so the skeleton of the building, making sure we can get, get something out, and that's gonna be going out this week. So it's, uh, you know, the floor plan is, is set, and, um, and which is important, uh, but we're, you know, all the air handler units, what's up on the roof, the weights, the size locations, all of that we've been working out, those details. So we're really getting into the, the details of the design now. Um, First Energy did get back to us, and there was no issue with the location of the building in proximity to their high, high power tension lines. They, however, did say that we have to move the recycle uh, bin area um, out of this, out of the, out of the site. It's in their easement, and so it was not going to be usable during construction over the next year or so, anyhow. But it cannot go back to where it is currently. So that's a decision they let us know on. Um, we weren't asking them about it. They just said, "Oh, we didn't know that that was there," kind of thing. So we have to move that. Um, the acoustic study still hasn't happened because of the weather with the snow. We can't perform it over the past month. So we're, and that's okay because we, we, um, that is not going to influence too much. It's more of a documentation of the conditions before and then after with the building there. Um, um, but we're, we're waiting for that to happen. Hopefully we can still get in in February. Um, the pool contractor has been working with um, WTI, our pool consultant, and with Sean, and really working on the details of the pools. And we're still making a couple tweaks to the plan uh, to make it the best site plan layout, but that's uh, well underway. Um, the activity is going to happen really soon here, uh, tearing down the uh, community center, um, the, the current community center. And we are getting drawings out this month to, for the demolition of five buildings. That would be the community center, the concession building on the ball fields and the three um, uh, accessory buildings uh, right at the ball fields. Um, so those, all five of those would be uh, demolished first. So it's important. I think the building is uh, not being utilized now and they're cleaning it out. Uh, we did do an assessment of all the existing site furniture like picnic tables, trash cans, scoreboards. We did a full assessment of what's there and what should be reused into our project from the standpoint of what's on the site. And we'll talk a little bit more of that in a few minutes. Um, I mentioned about the, st the steel mill order. That's going out this week. The project square footage is 33,573. And it's probably going to go down a little bit because we decided not to have um, the, the service dock, not to have the a little vestibule, like two doors to go into in the service area, just have one door. So there's probably another 70 square feet that's gonna come out of the project. Um, we've advanced the site plan and pull deck and wanna get into some of those site features. I think they're really kind of interesting how they're developing, I wanna share that with you. And then this week, Thursday, we're meeting with the Architecture Board of Review for our preliminary kind of first review with them. And that'll be a, you know, a two-step process. And we're gonna share with them the building mostly at this time. 
This is the latest site plan. This is the technical site plan from the civil engineer. So you know, it includes all the parking, the service center, all the features we're going to talk about today, the, the tension basins, everything's really getting worked out. The one area that we're really focusing on as well is the service dock and um, its relationship with the building, the size of it. Right now we're showing that a semi-truck can kind of turn around in it, but it's a lot of pavement for that. So we're trying to come up with a, an alternate idea that you know, a semi-truck, a 53-foot truck is going to be there sporadically. That's not the usual traffic, but we want to make sure at least a fire truck can get a, turn around in there, but we may find a different way for the semi-truck to back up and get in there so we can reduce the, uh, the um, paving back there. Next slide is the, uh, this is the service center, and you can see that at the, for, off of Marceau, a, a semi-truck can sort of stage off of Marceau before they get to the gate. So if it's someone that it does not have the uh, a controller for the gate um, and they need to get off Marceau, they're not staging on Marceau to get into the property. So that's why it's sort of set back that way. And then we have a retaining wall sort of all on the, the left or the west side. And we have, um, you know, that's going to be bermed up. It's going to have a fence. It's going to have landscape, a lot like arborvitae or something, really kind of camouflage that, that edge. So when you're in the parking lot, you're not really looking and seeing um, what's beyond there, concealing it the best we can. Um, and then the rest of the area is going to be a heavy-duty concrete, that whole area, and it'll tie into the existing uh, service center back drive off of, you know, right behind 271 there. This is the uh, current presentation plan, and it has um, s several interesting features I'd like to go through with you. The first one, Christopher, click to the next page. This is, we're calling this the clock garden, and when we did our site evaluation, next slide, you have a, a nice, you know, clock feature with a couple benches around, and we wanted to make sure there's a home for that in our project. So if you flip, uh, well, let's go to the next slide, uh, sorry. So what we did, what we did is right at the corner of our pool building, right off from our soul, this is the main entrance drive, is to really create a nice meandering sort of pathway that has the benches, the clock in the center, it has the a monumental uh, sign that announces you know, the facility, a ground sign, uh, relocate a flagpole, but really put all those, some of those site features and benches that are right at the uh, entrance actually to the uh, community center, we can place them around there. And then also there was an idea of um, maybe there's some bricks with people's names that we can get for, to, for donors that in that area could be all around that sort of that paving area, but really creating a nice, you know, because, um, you know, there's not, uh, you know, really a walking path around the facility. This is sort of an area to you can meander through and have a really nice experience with flowers and perennials and shrubs, and it could be a really, you know, just a nice soft entrance to to our, our project. Then on this other side, we're, we're debating this one. This is the picnic pavilion. The, the next slide shows that it could be, a, you know, a timber structure. We want to kind of introduce that wood a little bit. It, it may have um, a metal deck, a really deep rib metal, metal deck that kind of looks like water kind of flowing. But trying to figure that out, but it's a 26 by 50 foot structure with about eight picnic tables, and it's for camp. Um, as well as uh, the public to utilize when they're at the pool. It'll be fenced in. It'll also have access that it could be locked from the pool, and the playground could have access to it as well, or the public side could get to it as well. So we're studying the materials, and the, uh, this structure and the, the storage building, and there's a little sunbather pavilion I'll show you in a second, where we want to tie them all together with materials. And there are some, uh, we are doing some introduction of some wood on the building, and this might be another opportunity to kind of kind of bridge a more contemporary but still have some traditional materials. The playground, uh, we are advancing that. Sean has taken that a little bit forward, and we have some diagrams to show of, of a potential layout of this. This is sort of a first pass um, at the playground, and these are just some various b views of the features of it. And so, you know, we're doing the sort of the test fit of how does it fit on the site and the different features and so forth, and uh, that's just the latest progress of that. So it's coming out real nice. Then at the end of the uh, sort of the southwest corner, we really wanted to make sure that there was sort of an exclamation point on the end of that site, and it just didn't sort of, you know, bleed into the, the trees and 271, because it's open there. That's open to the trees that are there. 
And it, we really want to make a statement at the end. And there was always the comment about, could we get like a, uh, a walking path into the facility, kind of, if, if you want to just kind of walk and circulate around the whole facility? And the answer is, yeah, that's, that can happen in here. And what we're looking at is at the end of the pool deck is to have this raised platform amphitheater that goes up uh, three steps. The steps are, you know, maybe seven feet long. And... Um, as the tread, if you will, and then you could have sunbather uh, lounge chairs on there, uh, or you can sit because each step is going to be 19 to 20 inches tall um, from the standpoint, so there could be like a low wall that you're sitting on, or down the center, there's typical seven inch steps that go up. And then around the back of it, it ramps up behind it, so a wheelchaired individual could get up to the very top level as well and enjoy this. But that is sort of continues the circulation path. If you just want to walk around the whole pool deck facility, it kind of creates a nice loop. And the backdrop to this pavilion is the retention pond, and it'll be this will be bermed up as well with landscape around it. And then the right sketch, you know, these are concept sketches, but it has um, perhaps you know canopy for shade that that covers uh, two thirds of it as well. So just kind of a, a nice feature we're looking at. The floor plan, um, you, it has not changed since the last time you've seen it. Uh, a couple details we're working out is um, the community rooms and the uh, fitness area. The next slide shows these are the three community rooms that you've seen, 5A, B, 5B, and 5C, with divider partitions in between. And this is starting to be a first diagram that shows what it could look like inside, which, you know, the, the entry doors, the pair doors are to the left, and then there's a full height uh, windows in each of the separate rooms that look right out onto the pool deck. And then there are, we wanted to have some clear story windows at the top to get additional light in. And so each of the larger rooms have three clear story windows at this time. And then we would have where you see the dark areas, that's where the dividers close up. And then we have some slot light fixtures that, that will accent the area. And there might be some pendant lights, but this is sort of the first study of the details and starting to get into that, that interior look. But it kind of has that feeling of motion and flow and waves and beach. It's kind of trying to have some motion to the space, to a pretty static space. We'll probably make the, you know, the architecture, or I should say the finishes, fairly neutral, such that when events are setting up for holidays or a wedding reception, it's not the space that stands out. It's really the decorations and the, and the people and the, and the event that really create the, the ambiance feel. But we're trying to get daylight in. Of course, if we have windows up top like that, we'll have to have automatic uh, blinds that come down because be, that faces west. So there'll be some good sun that comes in those windows at certain times, and it could be a, an issue there. This is the uh, fitness room. Uh, we've, we've, the shape of this room has changed a little bit since last time. Um, but we've kind of uh, laid out the equipment. It's uh, 1,100 square feet. So this room has increased in size to, to match um, some facilities we've toured to make sure that we have the right amount of space for the, uh, the equipment and so forth. Um, Sean, was there anything that you wanted to add about the fitness room? So just real quick, that was the, the snapshot of all the sort of new details to the project. The pool itself um, has been evolving. The, the pool B, the activity pool, we've actually moved a little further away from the uh, leisure pool. We've kind of separated it uh, a little bit. And this is sort of an older plan. But there really hasn't been uh, much change on this at, at all. Um, it all has, has the same square foot, same uh, square foot of water as well. I'll pause right there. Um, we have certainly have the, the pool images and we have renderings of the exterior, but you've seen those before. Is there, uh, I guess I'll open up for some questions at this time. Mr. DeJohn. <clears throat> Did you say that the community building is being emptied currently? Yeah, the lower level has you know, the storage room and all that. Yes, it's being, you know. The so, so I just want to know where all the things that are in there, the pictures up on the wall and all the uh, memorabilia that's up there. Where is that being placed? It's, gonna, it's still up there now. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come to City Hall. And the plan is to develop a, a wall, a history wall to put on in the community center that we just built. In the new community center, yes. Yeah. So, so I did get a call from Mr. Nagel 
from Nagel Phil over there. He called me personally at home. He's very concerned uh, that his, his father-in-law will be memorialized uh, somewhere over in that area. And I'm sure that uh, Mr. Roberto and also Mr. Fanaro. Uh, so you know, the, the, these people are really concerned about this, that it's just gonna all go away. And as I've said before, these people volunteered a lot, a lot of hours over the years. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why it was really important on our first assessment of everything that's outside the building to make sure we preserve a lot of these, these features. Sean and his team is doing the same activity for the inside. And when we look at some of the, um, the things that are on the wall, the, the, you know, the, the, um, the name plaques and things like that, what we'd like to do is to utilize that but redo it new and in a sort of a, a modern way in the facility, not just take a plaque and put it. We need to integrate it into the design. So we've done a whole floor plan now of the facility, and maybe this is something I can share next time where we're looking for where are the opportunities for a little history wall, uh, where we're going to have a little fireplace and some lounge seating, where we're going to have accent things. So we're working on that, but we will not miss any details that so we need So what about have. where that sitting area is, like uh, Nagel sitting area um, oh. or Nagel playground or you know things like that where there will be a sign out there yeah, that's really important. We, we at every meeting we talk about that subject, and I, I I really put it back to Sean and the group to say we can't miss these details because they were important at one time and still are important. But we have to be sensitive to what are we you know whether it's there's a lot of opportunities and you know what you know what are you going to call the building? What are you going to the playground? Like are there opportunities for sponsorships to to raise some money for these different venues, the pavilion? the playground, the, the picnic area, you know, there's lots of opportunities. So I guess I have one more question if you, mm -hmm. just how big is the fitness room and why do we need a fitness room? It's 1,100 square feet and from the success of other community centers and uh, rec centers, uh, attention to the seniors in the community was really important and we felt ab above m most things that that was one area that we we thought was sort of a must-have that we need to we can't build this facility without having a space for seniors to go and it's not a, a free lifting area for the for for young that younger people would be really interested in it's not that type it's with equipment that has hydraulic things that make it easy easier and it's all the things to advance their health and wellness. And so the focus was on seniors for that space. <laughs> I was thinking about Senior you. fitness. No, and myself. And, and where exactly is it in, in the facility? Can you show for, me again, uh, please? If you could back up a, well, we've created, okay, that's good. Go back up. So show me a top view of where it is. Like, right oh, there. I see. So, I see. so what's neat about, this is one of those features, you come in 21, which is the lobby for the fitness side of the facility. You, there's changing rooms. You go down this corridor, and at the end, right where 24 is, there's going to be a bench. There's a skylight we put above. There's a there's an accent wall. It's going to be a really unique destination to go to. It's out of the way a little bit, and we're going to try to do um, that. That you can go outside, and there's a little potential plaza, a little seating area to do some yoga or just to sit with some chairs and tables and play cards or something. We're really <coughs> trying to make that a special, quiet area for them. Thank you. Before we go any, any farther, I just wanted to follow up on the, the Nagel, Honan, Roberto, Dijon, Draga, Kobe, Fonaro um, history. Um, so Paul, and I'm not sure his last name is not Nagel, but whatever it is, he called us as well. And it kind of sparked something that we need to do. And so I asked him if he could write up, you know, get a write up, a couple of paragraphs and some photos that we can highlight. And if we got that from everyone, obviously we'll have a plethora of that from um, your father, but like Mr. Kobe and Honan and all those guys, try to get as much information as we can and do a history wall. This, these are the fields that were here. These people started the Boys League or they, you know, I think Mr. Nagel said, or Paul said his father-in-law help to start the boys league with your dad. So those type of things that we don't want to forget. So we'll be reaching out, we'll be reaching out to um, the people that we know and hopefully trying to find all this information from all the people. 
I think Kobe called me last year, or uh, the daughter of Kobe from California, as she heard about it. So we're going to try to get all that information from people and come up with something very nice that will stand the test of time. So you're you're set against trying to name certain areas in this this park situation after them, or? No, no. I'm just telling you what we're doing to sh to highlight the history of what took place on these fields and what they were, what, all the main, the, the main names that were used and highlight them in the community center. You walk in and you see a highlight. That's not to say that we can't name something, the Nagel clock tower, but the reality is, is what's the Nagel clock tower? If you walk in the community center and you see Nagel and you see and you can read a couple paragraphs on the guy and see a black and white photo of him with his arm around Rusty John, you know, with a whole bunch of trees in the background, that's a little bit more substantial. That's all I'm saying. So. And then we're thinking about reutilizing you. Know, I, I think I mentioned before there's those nice glue lamb beams that are in the current Dijon Center. We might take a couple of them, cut them up, and make some really neat interior benches. Um, we think that would be a nice touch. Once again, trying to, and it has the wood, once again, pulling that inside, but it's a way to tangentially pull that in, but yet, do it in a, in, a, in a neat way, and there could be, those benches could be, you know, get donors and name them and do, do some neat things with them. So I think we're coming up with a plan, a, a program that shows all the opportunities, but we need all your input to tell us, get, direct us on, on what to do with it. Thanks. Thank you, Madam uh, President. So um, on that vein, um, I had a call yesterday with um, the Hanson family, and they, Paul, right, and um, they talked, you know, about the same thing, about, you know, getting some information um, about their dad who was with the Kiwanis and et cetera, et cetera, just as we said. And my question is maybe to the administration, do you know if we have any archives and old pictures? And I tried archiving, like, the Sun Messenger, um, because that was a long time ago when, you know, it was Mayor DeJohn. Do you think that there's anything in the City Hall archives that we would have stored someplace? Knowing Bob Trivi, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so that... We haven't really dug into it. I'm no, sure I'm that sure. There's a lot of stuff around. Yeah, okay. We have that. Look through it. So that maybe there is a picture, because they didn't have much. He didn't know enough about... Um, how everything transpired. He just knew that his dad had spent so much time and, and volunteered, and, um, and, and he sent me an email also. Um, I told him I, I would read it, but um, it's all about all that they've done, you know, in the city. So if we can, I will. And if, and if you can look it through some archives or you have an old box, I'll be happy to look through it. I tried going into the Sun Messenger, but uh, yeah, that's, um, that was that pretty history difficult. Book too. Yeah, right, see, a hit in our history book, book so there has to be something. There. Yeah. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. And then I have a question, how we talked about that southwest corner um, and then the amphitheater, so on and so forth. And you said there'd be a ramp for um, ADA. Can this amphitheater be used um, uh, like for a little music venue if we had a group out there that played music on a Friday night? Exactly, yes. And, and everybody can bring their own chair, something like what Twinsburg has or Yeah, there's there's if you look on on your screen, there's between the amphitheater and the pool, there's only so much space and we have to be careful because we can't have people at the, falling in the pool and stuff. But we have to we we have oh, we yeah. we have started to create that event that we could plan for just what you're talking about, but it's not going to be a venue that you can have a, a thousand people or right. five hundred right. people. It's it's really small, more intimate type of, you know, activity. But we did talk about an amphitheater, something sort of outside. That well, between parking and detention basins, we lost that real estate to do. But I'm getting it back in here. But it's not going to be something that you're going to have, you know, a, a concert with. You know, well. Unless they're across the pool or they're in the pool, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it, if they're in the pool area, if you know, as long as lifeguards are on, 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 you know, on the deck, yes. So if the pool were closed for swimming, but you allowed people into the facility, I'm assuming you still have to have lifeguards on duty. Um, even if, oh, yeah. 
just for safety. So, you know, and that's why I think, I can't remember whether we have lights in the pool, but we need to have, make sure we have ample lighting for this because the, the idea was that we have some dusk type events and that's really gonna be really special out in that area. It's gonna, it's gonna be amazing that space just for that purpose. Mr. Chada, have you talked about security cameras at all? We have started to talk about all low voltage systems, security, sound systems, all, all of that. Um, but we're, you know, not not quite at that point. But we have had some conversations, Sean, with um, mm -hmm. I forget the individuals we've who. Yeah. So, yes. What what do you have on your mind? Oh, that, that's all I was yeah, yes, wondering. Yes, we're getting to that in, in this phase. Over the next month, we will be, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Balistrea. Thank you, Krista. The, um, uh, behind the amphitheater, you, ha you talked about the walking area. But it seems to me, what's the, what's the space beyond that that's going around the pond? You don't show it on... What, what we've... How this has evolved is we, from our, our kind of our steering committee and going through this is we're not showing a walking path that comes down behind the backyards, going between there. We thought from a safety and security standpoint, having this sort of dead end walking path to nowhere is not necessarily something to promote. What we're trying to do is get that space into these areas uh, like this amphitheater walking path around that or the clock garden and some of these other features to create these events that you can walk around to that have um, sp special features to them. So the, so the drawing on the left did have a walk area. Um, There's a walk to area. To my left, I mean. Uh, and then to the right, where you have a retention pond. That's not seen there in that um, that, w, that W shape that you see, that is the detention pond that's now integrating right behind the the storage building and the amphitheater, and there's a fence that shows that goes around to you know close off the pool deck, but that's that becomes a backdrop for the amphitheater. Is the the nice you know the tension pond? It'll be pretty, yeah. and the trees that are in the corner there. I just thought if you'd connected that and people could still just it wouldn't be a path to nowhere, you would tie that in and be able to walk all we around there. I have a, we did I studied that a week, two weeks ago a path going around it. But we started to think, well, I, that was my thought. Can people on the pool deck, do you want them to meander behind there? Do you want children going back there? And then you don't, you don't have supervision. You have this detention pond, which has water in it. A couple you know, times a year, it'll have water in it. And we just you know, said, let's have the walking path that kind of goes up behind the amphitheater. You can look out on it. And, and see it, but not get you back there. Because once again, it's just not a supervised area. That was our, our logic to that. Okay. And a place, oh, yeah. and a place where people may congregate late or after hours. And you don't want to give them a path back there. So. You know, we from the neighbors, we listened to them, and they talked about how their people go back there, and there's, you know... I don't know if, if they said a sofa, but there's things that are back in that. People go back there and, and, and hang out. So we're trying not to promote that. Mr. Monaco. Thank you. Hi. Um, do any of your slides contain the occupant load of uh, various areas? N n none of these slides, no. Okay. So you haven't figured out the number of exits or? Yeah, we have. Yeah, I've, I. I have a, I sent, I sent you a copy of it. It's the, the whole programmer requirements and all the occupancy load for every single <coughs> space. That, that's, that's what we have. That's what we're using to calculate it. Okay. I, I don't believe I received anything with an occupant load on it. Could, could you? Hey, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's a detailed program, all the rooms. And I added a column for you that was about for business assembly, what are the occupancy load and the totals that we then carry up to, to um, calculate it out? And the pool deck as well, the numbers are in there. I'll, I'll send that. Thank you. Sure. Mrs. Savetta. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, so I just wanted to go back to the Nautilus room. Can any of those um, machines be rolled outside? Because they are doing that now in parks. They are putting small areas of bicycles for seniors to ride outside. You know, 
we'll have to get our fitness experts to kind of talk about that, or we need to specify equipment that can do that. You know, we, the four rectangles you see, there are treadmills. Those are large, heavy pieces of equipment yeah. there. Mm -hmm. There are some recumbent bikes and some other things to the right of those. The rest of it is fixed, seated, you know, kind of pneumatic tube. But if that's something that uh, you know, can be, like I said, I'm trying to create an outside area, and, you know, and maybe we could figure out what that type of equipment that could easily go out there. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Does any, Mr. Dijon? Just one last thing. Where uh, the community building's coming down, mm -hmm. and that's where it's going to be the new service yard. Is that correct? Yes. So I'm really concerned how that's going to look in relationship to the rest of the facility. I know you said a fence, and I know you said landscaping, but it's going to have to really be done tastefully so it doesn't look like an eyesore. Yeah, I'm concerned too. I so. that's I would rather it wasn't there, quite frankly, but it yeah. has to be there. Yeah. And the best we can do is to berm it up, put put some arborvitae, a whole hedge that, you know, in time, we're not gonna buy large plants, but yeah. to hide it, and we're gonna do a solid fence that matches the solid fence along the residence on the west side, it kind of matches, and, and do the best we can. Then we have these retaining blocks, these big, blocks that'll be three high and so that'll also create a higher barrier and you know you might see a, a you know a day one you might you'll see because the trees aren't going to be mature but it's really a long-term solution but it, it, we're going to do everything we can because I don't, I don't I don't like it there quite frankly because I think in the parking lot you're but we're doing everything we can to, to hide it okay thank you yep. those mounds of dirt are very high I don't think we're I, I'm, but with, with, when the tree, when the shrubs grow up and mature, it'll hide them. If we put them close enough, dense enough, and and, and I think you might be going for someone's going for a landscape grant, or, or some a tree grant or something that could help with making sure we can fund the density that you're talking about to block it. Okay, and when is that projected to come down? Soon, right? Yeah. Well, we have to we have to finish our drawings this month, and then send it to get plan you know review. Uh, that take a couple weeks, and um, then tear it down. And then we're gonna you know the contractor has to get their fencing up because you know we're gonna have a hole there for a little bit because there's a basement of the Dijon Center there, and it we're not going to fill it. We can't fill it with earth until we get the earth from the other side of the site and put in. And so we're, we're, it's, they're gonna put, there's going to be a fence around the service center and there's going to be a fence around the actual hole where the basement was to protect it from anybody coming on the site. But we are, yeah, this is going to move quickly, very soon. Okay. Mrs. Tressy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Mr. Trotted, um, <laughs> I just forgot my question. I'm sorry. Oh, shoot. Yes is the answer. I have to. I will do. think I was what I was going to ask you. God, I forgot. I'm sorry. Give me a minute. <laughs> Take your time. Are there any other questions no, from Council? Don, do you have anything? What was I just going to ask you? Yeah, you can always email it to him or ask him. We're going to try and have them <laughs> come before every council meeting just to keep us, um, you know, up to date with everything they're doing. So he'll be back in two weeks. Oh, you remembered. I did. Okay. <laughs> I am so sorry. Because I was writing as you were speaking. Sure. Um, so along the property um, with the homeowners, mm -hmm. um, we're going to put a fence. Is that fence going to be on a mound? No. It'll be replace their existing chain link five-foot fence with a solid six-foot fence. But right from the ground up, that's right, it. Replace what they have, correct. Mm -hmm. so, they're, so you've spoken to the residents because... You don't want them to be upset when there's a 40-foot slide behind their house. They they know of it. We've been very uh, transparent about the height, and their concern was they felt very happy if they had that six-foot solid fence, and they were happy if they didn't have people walking sort of in their backyards with their dogs because then their dogs start barking at those dogs. You know, so they, it's really to promote the neighbors' um, thoughts on this project and really show that we listened. Get to put a fence up, and that'll be sort of the construction fence too. We want to get that up early, so that they're not actually seeing. You know, there's dirt and debris. It's going to be a construction site, and that fence will help at least visually. And they were all fine with that. The one gentleman, a couple of them, you know, they're they're in. They're going to be looking. They're going to, they're going to see that. But we're going to have. You know, there are some trees that are, um, and then we're going to plant others. But it takes years for trees to get. You know, so we're not. 
we didn't tell them, oh yeah, we're gonna block the views. No, you're going to see it um, from several of the yards and they were fine, they were okay with it. So I know um, that the rehab place on uh, Lander Road planted trees mm -hmm. and they did evergreens and they, they're filling in, you know, pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. um, will you do something like evergreens that grow oh, a little oh, bit faster? That would be what I, we are gonna select. Okay. Um, but, you know, it depends, depends on the caliper you buy initially and the cost with that. But, you know, two, three inch diameter calipers and, you know, eight, ten feet tall. You know, try to get a little bit more mature ones, but it'll take years for them to get up. But there are a lot of um, evergreens right now there. So not every homeowner has a view of it, but, um, you know, we'll do what, do what we can. Plus, we have to go out there and really, um, now that we have the pool deck sort of figured out, we have to really map it out. And some of those trees have to actually come down because they are not in great shape right. or they have limbs that are dead and going to fall off. So we're going to take some trees down for safety, but uh, we will supplement it. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Monaco. Thank you. Uh, just for the record, I'd like to uh, point out that I received a couple calls from a residents back there, and okay. they're not happy about it. So, ha which aren't they happy about? Which oh, about the slide in a backyard? Yeah, pl please share if their names, or we could talk more will, with them. Yes, because yes. we did talk with everyone, and I had pictures from their back. You know, from what they're going to see, their views, and you know, they're saying they're saying that they were misled because they thought there was already a done deal. They didn't know that they had a say in it. They just were told that uh, this thing is going in and a fence is gonna go up to, to screen it. That's what they told me. Yeah, we, um, the result with all of them in this room, we talked to them and they said the fence would solve, that, that would make us happy. And um, a solid fence, a foot higher than they, they have. Um, they said that would be, that would be great. And, uh, the actual, you know, we showed them a, a cross section from their backyards to the pool or the tower to the building, and we showed the sight lines that you're, you know, you're, there's some visibility. Um, but they did really impact a lot of things. They impacted the fence. I don't know, but saying, for record, I, I I'm saying. A couple calls, they're not happy about it. Yeah, okay. Well, Sean, I welcome us to go back and talk to them. Okay. Um, that would be fine. And we're going to get the, uh, the and, and I told them, we did a whole diagram that this pool is there for three and a half months of the year. And the baseball fields and that activity is there seven to eight months a year. So the aperture of when there's disruption, you know, but you still will see the tower year round. But the, dis the noise and stuff, you know, that's limited to three and a half months of the year. Just to follow up, um, we did also talk to them about landscaping that area to add some buffer. Um, we are going to be applying for a, a grant to the county, a uh, healthy uh, urban tree, uh, tree canopy. And um, the thought is that we'd put up those Norway spruces that get real tall and, you know, try to block that slide. So, but, but regardless, you know, we, we did mention to them that we'd be adding some um, landscaping as well. Sean, the slide is 40 feet high. The trees are going to grow maybe to 20 feet. That slide could be seen from Lynnhurst. Okay, does any other council person have any questions here this evening? Oh, Mr. DeJohn. Sean, just one, one thing. You said you were going to get the, the uh, height of the slide at Mayfield Village Pool. Did you ever get that? No. Um, I believe that is 20, I believe that is uh, 25 feet high. I need confirmation on that. Um, I think Westlake was 40. I think Willoughby was 30. Um, I need to get confirmation on Mayfield Village. I don't know that I have 100% sure on that one. I think 25. Thank you, Mr. Chad and John, for Welcome. coming out this Thank evening. You. Um, this mo uh, time, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved by Mr. Balestrea, second by Mrs. Tressy. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are now adjourned. The regular scheduled meeting will start at 7.15. Thank you. You only ask if you You don't say no. You only say yes. What? Does everybody have
Hi. So, um, I drove by. It's fixed. Yeah, kind of fixed. It was full of snow, but I could still see the new. So I couldn't. I was going to take it.
Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone this evening to the February 14, 2022 Council Meeting of the City of Mayfield Heights. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Balstria. Present. Mr. DeJohn. Here. Mr. Mano. Here. Mr. Monaco. Here. Mrs. Sabetta. Here. Mrs. Snyder. Here. Mrs. Teresi. Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Um, next, we will move to the approval of the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting from um, January 10th. I hope everyone has had time to read those minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Move. Moved by Mr. Balestrea. Second. Second by Mrs. Sabetta. Are there any changes to those minutes? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? These, min these minutes have been approved. Next, we'll move to the minutes from the council meeting of January 24th, 22. I hope you've had time to read those over. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Move. Oh, moved by Mr. Monaco, second by Mrs. Tressy. Are there any changes or amendments to those minutes? Mrs. Tressy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And on page five of 10 of the council, meeting minutes. At the very bottom, it's your quote, President Snyder asked Mr. Murphy if the trail were approved. She wanted to know if AECOM will not in implement any amenities as she expressed her desire to not introduce. I saw that too. No, yeah, yeah so that's not what, really what you said, right? Not. Not. It should be not. That should be removed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That just needs Thanks. to be adjusted. I saw yeah, the same okay. thing. Yes. I, yeah, because it would have lost its meaning with that. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Are there any other changes? So if we can have that um, change put in there, that would be great. All in, fa in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? These minutes have been approved as written. Next, we will move to correspondence or announcements. Does any council member have any correspondence? Okay. Next, we will move to reports. Starting with the mayor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, good evening. Uh, last month, uh, Police Chief Fred Bittner retired after 33 years of public service. I had the pleasure of swearing in our new chief, Anthony Mealy, last week, who was in uh, the audience here this evening. Uh, chief Mealy uh, has a wealth of experience, and I have every confidence in him and his ability to serve as chief. Uh, The city's fire inspector, Terry Simonian, retired after nearly 46 years of fire service. Terry worked for the city uh, for 10 years and held numerous certifications as fire inspector, building inspector, uh, fire investigator, and public fire educator. Uh, we wish him many happy years during his retirement. Thanks, Terry. Uh, last council meeting, we did experience difficulties uh, with the recording equipment that has been resolved. Um, that meeting is available to uh, see if anyone would like to, uh, to view that. And this meeting can be viewed also. So we're up and running. Um, <clears throat> we have some new businesses that opened in the city. Against All Odds opened on Landerhaven Drive. The business offers adult daycare and activities. Handles Ice Cream will be re renovating and opening at 1245 Psalm Center Road. Uh, in the town center shopping center. Uh, Primo's, a new carry-out pizza place, is looking at the Pizza Hut space at 5867 Mayfield Road. And uh, the plans for sheets are completely approved and will start construction soon. And on our agenda this evening is Piata, uh, is moving into the former Brugger's Bagel location across the street. Uh, prelimin preliminary plans have been approved and interior construction will begin soon with a targeted opening date in early summer. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Are there any questions for the mayor? Okay. Uh, Director of Law, Mr. Schmidlin. Uh, 
Uh, the director of law sends his greetings with Mickey and Minnie from Orlando, Florida. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's, that's all I have. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, director of Finance, Mrs. Fagan. Thank you. Um, I just want to give council a quick update as we move forward with our software conversion in the finance department. We've been working and meeting with uh, the software company. Um, I was a little concerned originally when they said a lot of that would be done remotely, and it's been working out fabulously. It's been working out great, so we've been working on that, going through all the modules. We've recently reached out to all the departments to figure out who the users in each department would be. We're starting to build those roles and permissions, and we are still on track for a July 1 go live date. Great. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mrs. Fagan? Okay. Next, we'll move to our reports of committee commissions and boards, and we'll start with the building committee, Mr. Monaco. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, we had no meeting, uh, so therefore I have no reports. Uh, but I'd like to point out that I've looked at the uh, schedule fee for building permit, and I really think that it needs to be updated. Uh, so I would like to uh, probably wait until the new commissioner is hired and discuss this with them so that we can, uh, we can update it. Okay, you can call a meeting when that happens. Oh, well. Okay. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Finance and Audit Committee, Mr. Uh, DeJohn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I don't have a report tonight. Thank you. Um, Legislative Committee, Mrs. Sabetta. Thank you, Madam President. No report. Thank you. Public Works and Service Committee, Mr. Balistrao. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do have a report. Uh, Public Works Committee met on February 9th. The 2022 road and sidewalk programs were discussed. Uh, PCRs were discussed for all the Mayfield Heights roads. Uh, the city engineer made some suggestions uh, for those programs. Uh, there was a long discussion. It was a rather long meeting. Uh, the, the Public Works Committee uh, will meet again to discuss uh, the final uh, recommendations, and then we will send those off to Council for approval. So we will have another meeting. Okay, great. Thank you, Mike. Any questions for Mr. Balistrea? All right. Recreation Parks Committee, Mr. Mano. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This one's a little on the short side. We have opened registration for the following programs. <coughs> Little Spikers Volleyball, Deck Hockey, Spring First, and Ten Flag Football. For more information or to sign up to visit, visit the website or call the Recreation Department at 440-442-2627. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. Mano. We'll move to Safety and Transportation, Mrs. Tressy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The Safety um, and Transportation Committee has not met. I did reach out to both uh, chiefs, um, but we have not had a formal meeting. And both gentlemen are here this evening if they'd like to talk about anything. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and Board of Zoning Appeals, Mrs. Sabetta. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the Board of Zoning Appeals has two Resolutions on first reading on tonight's agenda. I encourage the applicant to address council during the public portion. There is a meeting tomorrow night here in council chambers at 7 p.m. There's one item on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sabetta. And the Planning Commission, Mr. Balistrea. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Planning Commission met on uh, February 7th. Uh, council was copied on the minutes. Uh, as a result, we have two motions on the agenda this evening. And I would just, uh, I forgot to mention with, with regards to public works, uh, one of the agenda items that we added to the agenda was the die test program. And I just want the residents to know uh, that we haven't forgotten it. It's, it was discussed and we're just waiting on the weather to continue that program. Okay, great, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Balistrea? All right, thank you. We're gonna to move to comments from the public. Um, we will now proceed to the public portion. Pursuant to city code, each person will be allotted five minutes to speak with a maximum of 30 minutes for the entire public portion. 
If you are here in connection with an agenda item, this is your opportunity to address council. If you would like to be heard this evening and have not done so already, please fill out a form located in the back of the, on the back of the table by the public entrance. Um, during the public portion, I will call each person wishing to speak to the podium. Please state your name and address for the record and speak clearly into the microphone. It is now 7.30. I will open up the public portion. You could just come up. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Just come forward and just state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Jeff Lonchar. I am uh, with CESO. Uh, I am located at 2800 Corporate Exchange Drive in Columbus, Ohio, Suite 400. Uh, I'm the applicant uh, on behalf of Piata for the two variance requests for across the street. Uh, the first one is requesting uh, an increase to the parking, I guess, maximum, uh, which would allow us to go from, I think, the allowed 12 to 25. I actually have a typo on the resolution. This is 21. We actually have 25 on the proposed plan. Um, I apologize. I can't count. Um, and then on the second resolution, we request uh, to have a drive-through I guess element on three side, more than two sides of the building. Um, if you're familiar with that site with the one way circulation, there's really no way around that. So we request a reprieve from that requirement. Um, other than that, I'm happy to answer any question that council may have. Thank you. We can address it when it comes before us. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else that would like to be heard? Oh, come on. Thank you. Thank you. Joan, you could just yeah, come right up. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Joan Gotchling. I'm here representing the Mayfield Township Historical Society volunteers and members to thank you for your very generous support by your grant money that you gave us this year for 2022. As you know, we use it for our programming, our speakers, and to help with the school children visits that uh, the school kids come from the third grade through all the schools um, in the spring. Unfortunately, last year with our COVID, we had to shut down the house, but we did do a virtual tour, which was very well received. Um, you can do a lot with a iPhone, <laughs> you know, and the kids loved it. Um, we also expect you as members of the township, Highland Heights, Mayville Heights, Gates Mills, and Mayfield Village, the original township members, to reach out to your community members. You see the people in the community, maybe somebody's interested. Somebody needs uh, some history. Uh, you're, you're looking for pictures of Kiwanis. Well, come to us. We might have them in our records. We have a big uh, research library in our house. Um, and people that you meet on the street and, and some of the people on your uh, routes there that you talk with, hey, they might have some old pictures we can scan, some memories to share with us that we can record. And we're always looking for volunteers. So thank you again for all your help. We're gonna, you're going to see us this summer at Community Days and some of the musical events. We're going to have a table up with pictures of the old and the new Mayfield Heights from way back when to, to, to the present day, how things have changed. And people have been well re receiving that. So hope, hopefully we'll see you at those events. And thank you again. Thank you. Sean, maybe we could um, take pictures of some of the things that we have right now as, it, as they exist so that they can scan what, what we have up into your library. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have Mr. Wiley. Yep. I'm here to represent the represent the Chick-fil-A project tonight for uh, motion number uh, 10B. So if you have any questions on that and when it comes up, let me know. Okay, great. Thank you, Thank you so much. Is there anyone else that would like to be here this evening? Okay. 
It is 7.34. I will close, close the public portion. Okay, we will move to resolution 2022-5. Mr. Schmidlin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Number 2022-05, a resolution confirming the action of the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Mayfield Heights and granting to Jeffrey Lawn Chair CESO Inc. on behalf of Piata Group LLC and Lucarelli Limited Partnership 6075 Mayfield Road, a variance to increase the maximum number of parking spaces on the restaurant property from 12 to 21, which I understand now is 25. Uh, Cuyahoga County Permanent Parcel Number 861-17-001, second reading. Thank you. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. Moved by Mr. Monaco, second by Mrs. Sabetta. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balstria. Yes. Mr. Dijon. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Moved. Moved by Mr. Balstria, second by Mrs. Tressy. Um, we heard from the applicant this evening. This was a five to zero vote in favor of the variance request. And Mrs. Sabetta, would you like to add anything? Um, no, thank you. Um, he did a very good job in explaining. His paperwork all says um, 21, but it does say in the comments that they usually in their plaza, which is typically where Piata is, they usually have 20 to 25 spaces. The current um, parking has 37. Though we don't like to take away parking, it was clear that he's working with and dealing with an existing building, okay. an existing flow. Okay. So we saw the hardship there. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mrs. Sabetta or the applicant? Okay. Mr. De Ooh, Mr. Dijon. Oh, I thought your point. Um, Mr. Monaco? Mrs. <laughs> Thank He's you. He's pointing to someone over there. I don't know who's pointing <laughs> to. Mr. Okay. <laughs> I'm so yeah. I yeah. said the same thing to Mr. Monaco. I have to sit back. Um, I see that there's a patio that will seat 40 people. Um, I believe it's going to be fenced. Am I correct, Mr. Launcher? I know that um, Mr. Jameson likes having bollards around a patio so that a car can't. Um, you know, drive into people. So you will put bollards around this? No, we will not be putting bollards around it. The patio will have curbing on all sides except for the ADA accessible flush curb walkway. And that's the only area that would be exposed that's adjacent to the patio on either side. Uh, the patio will have a six inch curb around it. Um, the ADA space, as well as I think some of the parking in front of it will have a bollard sign so there, I guess there will be bollards in front of it, but uh, to deter any uh, parking uh, customers from going too far up into the patio, there are planters kind of on the around the perimeter that do create a, maybe not the same effect because um, a concrete bollard is not, you know, it's more strength uh, than a planter, but the planters, I think there's three on each side, kind of act as the uh, outer perimeter to enclose that patio. And then furthermore, you have the table in the more central location. So uh, a car would have to uh, jump the curb, fully jump the curb to actually reach anyone who might be eating there. Not that I'm belittling, you know, the safety um, or concern that there is, but <coughs> unless someone were to fully lose their vehicle and be going extreme speeds, they wouldn't be able to jump that curb and get to where someone it's might happened be. happened before. I'm not saying it <laughs> has happened. And I know Mr. Um, Mr. Jameson was adamant on Psalm Center where we used to have Aspen Deno and he um, had them put in 17 bollards across the whole front of whole, the whole front of the shopping center and it has a six inch curb. Mr. Jameson, um, that's where your Baby Bop up. is and um, a few other Giorgio. stores. Giorgio's, yeah. And I know Mr. Jameson was adamant about putting bollards there. Uh, thank you, Tom Jameson, building director. Um, that is not, the fire department was very much involved in that as well. So will uh, they be as concerned here? W uh, my point is they have to submit uh, improvement plans and they have to submit construction documents. 
So that'll be part of the review. It'll, it'll, we'll, we'll understand more of how it's gonna look and what's gonna be built, how it's gonna be built, and if we need uh, further safety precautions, we'll put it in the plan review. Okay, good, thanks. We wanna make sure anybody's sitting outside at a patio is safe. Right. Thank you. Madam Chair, Mrs. Chancellor. if I could. Ms. Um, the Seco, he's the job. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, um, it, when, looking at the plans when we looked at it in, in the uh, planning commission, there's only two spots that really face the patio, and they're two handicap spots, <clears throat> and those are going to have bollards in, mm -hmm. in front of them. Okay. So <clears throat> on the other side, on the east side of the patio, there is no spots facing straight in. That's part of the drive-in lane. So um, did I read that they're going to take out angled parking? They'll, it'll be on the west side. There's, there's some angle parking in, but only two of them will match up to the patio. If you look yeah, at the Yeah, so the, the site will remain angled parking and one-way circulation in nature, entering on the southeast drive, kind of looping around the building to the southwest exit. But uh, as far as parking goes along the patio, there will only be uh, angled parking against the patio on the west side. So currently there is mm -hmm. uh, angled parking on each side of the patio for the right. existing burgers. We're removing the angled on the east side of it. Okay. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Okay, roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. DeJohn. Uh, yes, I'll approve it according to the upgrade to 25 spaces. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Valstrea. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. <clears throat> Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Resolution 2022-5 has been approved. Mr. Schmidlin, 2022-6. Thank you, Madam Chair. Number 2022-06. A resolution confirming the action of the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Mayfield Heights and granting to Jeffrey Launcher, CESO Inc., on behalf of Piata Group LLC and Lucarelli Limited Partnership, 6075 Mayfield Road, a variance to allow drive through lanes to be located on more than two sides of the building in conjunction with a new restaurant on the property. Cuyahoga County Permanent Parcel Number 861-17001, second reading. Thank you. Is there a motion to suspend the rolls? Moved by Mrs. Tressy, second by Mr. Monaco. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Balstria. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Move. Moved by Mr. Balstria. Second okay. by Mr. Monaco. Again, this was a five to zero vote in favor of the parking variance. And we heard from the applicant, Mrs. Sabetta, would you like to add anything? Did everyone get a site plan? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the site plan directly, as you can see, um, the applicant clarified that the pickup window is in the rear of the building. So technically, the third side is not part of the drive through, but it's the only way to exit. Can you see that? You can exit yeah, only on one way closest to. Yes. The drive through, the pickup window is in the rear, and the only way out is coming to Plus Mayfield side. Road. They're keeping that the same. So technically, we saw the hardship. It's not really considered drive through because it's the exit. Mrs. Tracy. Thanks, Madam Chairman. Um, so is this a new concept for Piatas? Because I know that the one at yeah, Cedar Center exactly. has no drive-through. It's in the middle of a shopping center. The one on, um, I went to the second Cedar one. Center. I went to Cedar Center oh, and- One by Harvard. Uh, by Harvard. Yeah. And neither one have a, have a drive-through. So it's technically a pickup window, so an order ahead. Um, so if you order and uh, go to pick it up, you could pick it up in the store or you could stay in your car and circulate uh, through the pickup queue uh, and then at that window, get your order 
uh, and then be on your way. Uh, so th those two do not. Um, I know that they kind of does have several stores with this concept in Columbus. There is one. Uh, there's a few down in the Dayton, Cincinnati area. Um, so I wouldn't say it's new necessarily, um, but it's something that is, you know, being implemented more and more with their new builds and their new sites. And with 25 parking spaces, will you have enough um, parking for eat-in, for dine-in, because you will have dine-in, and you'll have employees. Will you have enough parking space um, for all of these cars? Yes. So with uh, the 25 spaces, uh, just say on an average shift, there's five to six employees, so you're down to 20. Uh, there are 32 seats, give or take, but it only equates to about six to seven tables, one being a community table. Uh, therefore, you know, assuming that if I won't assume, but say a group of a table of four, two or three people drive, you know, if you're looking at two to three cars, say even for the six tables, you're looking at 18 cars, give or take now. Um, typically when I eat at Piata, not that this matters, but you know, I'm probably there about a half hour. So, you know, in theory, uh, even if the lot were to fill up, there wouldn't be really anywhere for someone to possibly park or to try to eat in. Now, if there is the combination where someone is parking, and they go in and pick up their food, those people would probably be in and out in a few minutes. So uh, there is some give there, but um, I use kind of a higher probably uh, ratio with two to three cars per table. Um, if a family goes, it's a, a Jeep, uh, table four, you know, that's one car with one table. So we think that this is a, 25 spaces is adequate, and it's typically what Piata goes for uh, with this size of a building. Thank you. Now, is there a front entrance or, you know, where the pickup went? Is there a side entrance or just going through the front? So the site itself, the Brugger's entrance is, I think, on, like, the front right. It's going to be cent centered now, uh, and there will just be the one main door and then, I think, just an exit door, uh, very similar to where the Brugger's one is on the west side that's facing the side street. So that will remain uh, more so as an exit, I think, more than anything. Mm -hmm. But as far as the pickup window, if someone were to go into the store to pick up the meal, they would actually go up to the counter and get their meal. They wouldn't go to the, you know, like physically walk up to the pickup window right. or try to access that portion. That would just be for the drive, the cars. And then I've been to a Piata in Columbus where they had like a, a covered patio area. It almost felt like it was an open seating, but it was still within the building. Is that how this is going to be? Uh, not entirely the okay. same. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. DeJohn. Do you anticipate any uh, stacking up on the Mayfield Road? So, uh, glad you brought that up. The traffic study, um, just kind of which looks at the traffic manual and that sort of thing, they uh, approved our stacking, which our proposed stacking in that queue fits six cars fully and then has room for like half of a seventh car, call it. Um, and they deemed it uh, adequate uh, stacking. And then I also do have some data from Piata, from the two two of the newer stores, and one in Kettering and one in Mason, um, that their average, uh, their average, I guess, stacking uh, for cars ranges from, you know, during the lunch hours, uh, four to five, and, uh, and then, during the you know the PM peak during dinner times, it's roughly the same where it's around four mid fours. So based on the averages, now there will be outliers here and there, but based on the averages and the typical time that the orders, uh, you know, someone pulls up and they get their food, being a minute to a minute and a half, uh, we don't see the queuing or the stacking being an issue based on those numbers. Because it's very dangerous if they do stack up on the Mayfo yeah. Road. I mean. We see it, it all up and down. With some of the yeah. other businesses, so yeah, yeah, we don't anticipate that here. Uh, the pickup window we know is a little bit of a different concept, but uh, we don't have anything that will be on site that would reflect a drive-through uh, besides the lane, really. So there might be a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, we're hoping that you know doesn't linger or last. But besides that, uh, you know, people being on site, you know, about a minute, call it, you know, they'll be in and out of there depending on the size of their order, obviously. If it's bigger, they might be there for two minutes. Thank you. Mr. Balistrea. Yeah, uh, Mr. DeJohn, I don't know if you received um, the information 
that um, was given to the Planning Commission with regards to the number of cars and stacking. So we felt it was very, you know, adequate data presented, and we don't think there's going to be any issue with, based on the data that we received with any kind of stacking on Mayfield. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. But yeah, I, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I did see that information. Okay, I but didn't know if you. You know, but I see McDonald's how they stack up onto yeah. Mayfield Road, and it, yep. it's 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 a terrible safety condition. That's what I was going to ask, Mr. Balistrea. How many cars does Mayfield, uh, I mean McDonald's, uh, stack? Do they stack about the same number of cars, and they end up in the yeah, street? No. 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 Um, twelve. They stack twelve. Even with the, I know. On the uh, property, we, yeah. It was said that once we had that second menu board, that stacking would kind of diminish, but... It's about 10 or 11 right now. Is it that many? Yeah. They, they're still stacking in the, in, into the street at McDonald's. Even with the, curve. And the, dairy Even with the second menu board. We, you know. Dairy well, Queen, Duncan. McDonald's will start their construction for the second lane pretty soon. So. But, okay. All right. We'll move to roll call on the motion to approve. Thank you. Valstria. Oh, uh, yes. Mrs. Teresi. <laughs> yes. Ms. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Resolution 2022-6 has been approved. Resolution 2022-11, Mr. Schmidlin. Madam Chair, 2022-11, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter to an agreement with the Village of Gates Mills for furnishing emergency medical services uh, for the period of January 1, 2022 through December 31st, 2026 and declaring an emergency. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Move. Mm. Moved by Mrs. Tressy, second by Mr. Balistrea. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balstrea. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Move. Moved by Mr. DeJohn, second by Mr. Mano. This resolution authorizes municipal corporations to enter into contract with one another for protection services. This will be from January of 2022 through December 31st of 2026. Are there any questions from council? Seeing none, roll call on the motion to approve. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balstrea. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. This resolution has been adopted. Next, we'll move to resolution 2022-12. Mr. Schmidlin. Madam Chair, 2022-12, a resolution declaring the intention of the City of Mayfield Heights to provide financial incentives to acquire and develop the property formerly known as the Mayland Shopping Center and associated parcels and declaring an emergency. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? A move. Moved by Mr. Monaco, second by Mr. Balistrea. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balstrea. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. No. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Move. Moved by Mrs. Teresi, second by Mr. Balistrea. Um, we've all received a memo um, from the law director and also um, we can ask the mayor and Mrs. Fagan if they have any further they want to add to this. Um, are there any questions at this time? Seeing none? Mm -hmm. No, I have a question. Yeah. Mrs. Sabetta. Thank you. Um, I have some concerns that I would like to have cleared up. Um, there was just a three hour meeting to review, review our city budget. And the departments for last year, and I hear again this year, were asked to hold back on non-essential equipment, purchases, capital items, and new personnel. Many of these items have become a necessity this year. COVID-19 and the effect that the stay-at-home workers have on income tax revenues, you know, need to be considered. Um, 
we encourage our departments to apply for grants. I guess what I'm getting at here is we, and I do agree with Mr. DeJohn, we are putting in a new aquatic center and we may be losing quite a lot of money in this new stay at home credit. And we have asked our departments to mind and watch what they're billing. And we need necessities now this year here. So I'm wondering where we're getting this $2 million. If okay, Mayor Zaseka. It makes no mention of any type of, uh, I mean, a, a number, $2 million. It, it is in the resolution, yes. It, well, it's in the resolution, but <clears throat> there's only certain monies that we can use for that. So you're, you're talking about commingling different types of funds. Um, not commingling, I guess that's a different, that's the wrong word. <clears throat> yes. Money that we can use <laughs> as incentives cannot be um, money that we have um, gotten from taxes or uh, property tax or income tax or things like that. So this is just a <clears throat> an assurance to the developers that if we if they provide us with uh, information and, and numbers and we feel <laughs> comfortable that we can construct some type of funding for them or some type of um, uh, grant for them that we are in support of that. So that will help them going forward to develop the property. It's not committing <laughs> $2 million of city funds. No, not city funds, but in order to help them, such as a TIF or we would have to get loans and bonds and put up if that it's show, If it's shown that, that it is in the best interest of the city and for the, um, the, um, the term is for the common, not common good, um, for good and better health. For public purpose, okay. that's it. Um, then we can, then we can go ahead and do it. But this is guaranteeing nothing. This is just giving the developer a, um, a reassurance that if everything is um, created correctly and we have the, the uh, information we need to put something together for them, then we will try to help them with it. That's all I'd say. We developed Thank you. Yeah. Um, so let me look at this. Hmm? Mrs. Tressy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Mrs. Sabetta, there are a lot of, I, I work for a real estate developer, and there are a lot of real estate developers that help um, when, when they're going into a city um, and they're doing a project and the city does help um, them do infrastructure and um, some of the um, items that are needed um, in order to remove that blighted property and have that new development become a success. I, I know that firsthand for a development that um, my company did and um, the city that really assisted them at the time. So um, everybody's complained about Mayland and how it looked. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody sitting at this table has come forward with all of the comments about what our residents were saying about Mayland and um, you know this could turn out to be a beautiful project and um, if we have to help what little help we can give something might be better than nothing to get it going so it's just not either blighted or a blank feet you know muddy field that's kind of just my opinion I, I do have one question, though, about the ninth whereas in, mm -hmm. in this um, resolution. Um, whereas First Mayland has requested the city provide economic incentives to assist in acquiring property, comma, developing that property, and ultimately placing former Mayland into productive <coughs> condition. Um, I don't understand the acquiring property, those two words.
you want to somebody say something? Well, they've already, I mean, it's, they've already acquired it. So we're not acquiring property. Okay. So we're not. It, it assists them, I would suppose, is why it's there. Okay. And, and then the council authorizes and directs administration to include redevelopment, blah, 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 in section three, four, and five. Should a city council be um, uh, included in that so that we have um, the opportunity to look at what administration is well, giving, doing, et cetera? Madam Chair. Mayor, go ahead. And that was one thing I left out when I was addressing uh, Mrs. Sabetta, is whatever we do, it's got to come back for council, and you guys got to approve it. Okay. So, I mean, it's not, you're not giving the administration authority to do anything here, but you as a whole are giving their, your support to them. That's okay. it. Good. Thanks. And I do agree with you, Gal, with your, with your comments. And I wanted to say that if Mayland develops that area, it's only going to provide jobs, which in turn then the, the city will get revenue. So I don't know. I mean, it's only going to help better than what's there now. So property taxes, yeah. property, tax, property income taxes, income, and income, income tax, tax, payroll yeah. tax. I understand. And, it, help and it won't be a blighted property. Are at a loss. There's so. a lot to this resolution. No offense to the law director. I wish Mr. Murphy was here today. None taken. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the hot seat. <laughs> Does any other um, question, any council person have a question? Nope. Nobody? Okay. Roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Balstria. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Resolution 2022-12 has been approved. We have one ordinance on, um, on, the on the agenda this evening, but at this time I'm going to take ordinance uh, number 2022-3 and refer it to the legislative committee um, in hopes that they will have a representative from the building committee um, there as well as safety and transportation. So we will not vote on this um, ordinance till we look at this further. Um, so then we will move to motions. Madam President. Oh, so, Mr. So DeJohn. Yeah, I'd just like to ask for uh, Shanisha to schedule that meeting with all three uh, committees. Thank oh. you. Well, Ms. What was this is about his legislative chair. Your co chair. Oh, oh, Member. Oh. But you spoke for her. You're good. You're the member. Could you say that? And, sa and safety? That's right. I'm Is that what you So we're going to do. I would like to have a representative from, from safety as well as building. Okay. Okay. So it could be combined, whatever you'd like, but I'd like to have those other two committees there as well. And Bob. Thank you. Okay. We'll move to motions, beginning with motion A, Mr. Schmidlin. Madam Chair, motion A, a motion to approve the preliminary site plan for a new restaurant, Piata, at 6075 Mayfield Road, using the existing building. Is there a motion to approve? Moved. Moved by Mr. Balestrea, second by Mr. Mano. Um, this is the final site plan, and um, nope. the Planning Commission? Preliminary. Might, preliminary, I'm sorry. Yeah. Preliminary site plan. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I think the applicant uh, answered most of council's <coughs> questions. Uh, I drove the site, and it, it's actually a quite large site to put in a drive-through uh, going around, and I think they're going to be a welcome addition uh, to the city. Uh, they still have to come back, um, as uh, Mr. Jamison stated, uh, with the final site plan, with, the, with some of the questions that council had. So we'll see those in the final site plan. Perfect. Okay, thank you. All right, roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. Balstria. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Madam motion. President. Mrs. Sabetta. I just had one question. In the minutes, it stated that they might need a parking experience for Chick fil A. Is, that's the next one. Did you come up with that? That was determined that they don't. They do okay, not. good. Thank you. Okay, so motion A has been approved. Motion B, Mr. Schmidlin. Madam Chair, motion B, a motion to approve the preliminary and final site plan to add a second drive through uh, pickup lane at Chick-fil-A 6390 Mayfield Road. 
Is there a motion to approve? Cool. Moved by Mr. Mano, second, second by Mr. Monaco. Um, we, the applicant is here this evening, so if we have questions, we'll have him come up. But this was reviewed, reviewed by our planning commission and approved. Um, Mr. Bellastre, would you like to add anything or the applicant? Yes, like so, uh, the, um, the second um, drive through pickup uh, lane would be on the, the south side. Um, and uh, the applicant also requested that this uh, become a final site plan as well. So we're voting on preliminary and a final uh, this evening. Uh, there would be no detriment to any of the site. So uh, it was a simple approval from unanimously from the Planning Commission. I have a quick question for you. You know those four spaces, like there's a drive through and there's like four parking spaces. Is, are they removing those to extend those? Is Milan still here? You want to answer that? If he could come up? I don't think so. Yeah, where the, the, the window. Right here. Is right. it the second oh. drive through? Yes, there's 10 yeah. spaces there Just currently. We're going to remove six of those and leave four parallel spaces for our, probably will be four employees. Okay. So you'll move the, remove those four. And then there's the road to drive, or six. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Tressy. So, um, I, first of all, it's a really long uh, drive through. Yeah. Um, you could be in that drive through for 20 to 40 minutes <laughs> between pulling in and <laughs> getting to the back. Will they add additional people to a accommodate some of these cars? Yes, so the whole reason for adding the second lane is that we'll actually have runners out there and they'll, the runners will um, deliver food to that second outside lane. So as you come around, you'll actually filter to the, to the window and then they're gonna filter out in a second lane on the outside and they'll be handing out orders to both sets of lanes. So it should speed up the queue going through there. That's the whole reason for doing this. Yeah, it's really a really a cluster. I mean, I've waited in that line. Actually, it Twenty what? Her business. Yeah. No, it yeah. doesn't. No, I'm I'm. You know, it, it's it's yeah. wonderful. It's yeah. I'm happy for the for the owner, um, but holy cow, when you're the in the car, mm -hmm. you're just like, I want I want to jump the curb and leave <laughs> on Mayfield Road because yeah. you're there for going. thirty minutes sometimes in that line even after you place your order just to go around, it doesn't seem like they have enough help or it's, something. That's an issue everywhere right now. It's not enough help. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I think they have this at the Manor location, this extra, because the, the people run it, runners? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're actually okay. instituting this across the nation right now. Ah. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Mr. You. Monaco. I was uh, a building commissioner in Macedonia when <coughs> we added the second line to their chick fil -A there. Yep. And uh, the owners are Dan Stengel, and we worked together with him, and he really beautified the place. He put in some right iron fencing around with some, um, with some masonry posts, with some lighting on top. <coughs> mm -hmm. Is that possibility that we could do this in Mayfield Heights, that would be awesome. Uh, not right now, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, Madam President. Mr. DeJohn. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> just, is there going to be a canopy over this? In the back, there is just a half canopy. It's currently existing, and that's just going to remain. Just, just that, that's there because... Yeah, we're not adding one. Currently. Because in the front part, there was no canopy, and all of a sudden, one day, I'm driving up Maple <laughs> Road, and there's a canopy there. I just want to make sure that's not going to happen again, because I'd like to know about it ahead of time. Yeah, no, I, I was surprised to see it there, to be honest with you, because I was part of the original design, and it was not on the original, and I came up here uh, to do a site, and, a site visit when I was doing this set of plans, and the canopy was there, so I'm not sure how it got there. Yeah, neither do I, so... <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yep. All right, roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balistrea. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Motion B has now been approved. We'll move to motion C, Mr. Schmidlin. Madam, <clears throat> Madam Chair, motion C, a motion to authorize the solicitation of bids for the service center roof replacement. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. 
Moved by Mrs. Trussey, second by Mr. Monaco. Um, this motion will let the city go out for bids for the roof that's needed and the main service roof. I believe it's um, having some issues. <laughs> um, and this is in the budget for this year, it correct? Is. Yes, it was included in the budget. Okay, thank you. Does any council member have any questions? Okay. Roll call and motion to approve. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balustrea. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Uh, motion C now has been approved. We will move to new business and comments from council. Is there any new business or comments from anyone here this evening? Okay, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. Moved by Mrs. Trusty, second by Mr. Um, DeJohn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, all, we are now adjourned. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat>